This video is going to review the use of the FlexMAC tool for characterizing performance tests carried out on the AMPT equipment. Um, there are two spreadsheet files that are used for this purpose. Uh, one is called FlexMAC Cracking. The other is called FlexMAT Rutting. This video will review FlexMAT Cracking. Uh, FlexMAT Cracking has gone through a few different iterations over time. Uh, depending on your background, you may have seen an earlier version or you may have had direct experience with the one that I am showing you. Uh, the, one, the newest version, uh, the one that this video demos, is version 1.1. You'll notice that the size of the file is around 1 megabyte. Uh, the earlier versions could be quite large. And so if you see a much larger file, it's likely that you have an older version and you're going to want to download the newer version before watching this video so that you have the correct one. In a moment, I'll open up that program to show you how it's used. But first, I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about file structure. Um, when you run FlexMAT cracking or you run the experiments to characterize um, the materials, uh, you're going to have to run two different types of tests, dynamic modulus test and uh, cyclic fatigue test. Um, now the, the UTS software or the software from the AMPT manufacturer that conducts the test will have the ability to export the data to typically comma separated text files and that's what we're going to use for the analysis. Now setting up the file structure helps um, run the analysis in the way that FlexMAT expects it to be done. So I'll start with the dynamic modulus. The way I organize the files here is I create a folder for each of the tests that I want to analyze, cyclic fatigue, dynamic modulus, and stress sweep. Although for this video, we're not going to focus on what stress sweep uh, file structure looks like. That'll be in the other video. If I, look, if I start with dynamic modulus, you'll see that the file structure is such that I have one main folder for dynamic modulus, and then subfolders for each of the replicate tests that I perform. In this example, we have named the tests surface-1-2-3 because we have three replicates. In that folder, in each of the folders, you will find, depending on what you export, a host of tab delimited files that will be used for the analysis. Um, the ones that are really important are the ones that end in dash sum. The program FlexMAT will look for these files after you indicate what folder it should use to look into them. So we have three folders. Each of them, if I click in, have the same basic structure and each of them have the summary files that are exported from the uh, UTS software that conducts the tests in the AMPT. If I go back to the example files folder, I have another major folder called cyclic fatigue. Inside of this, I also have three specimens. Now, they, in this example, they are also named S1, S2, and S3, but these are, in fact, different specimens altogether than the ones that were used for dynamic modulus testing. We just keep the same name for the example purpose. In each of these folders, just like in dynamic modulus, you have the exported files from, AM, from the AMPT. In my example data file, I have several files. Um, the ones that will come by default from the AMPT that are important include initial five cycles, final five cycles, DMF, and the, this file without a specific subscript or postscript, which is a, a summary file containing the elements of the test. You may or may not export the runtime file. FlexMAT does not care about that runtime file. It does not need it in order to run. In each of those files, again, you'll find that we have the relevant files that we need, all of which have been exported from the UTS software. Okay, so before you start analysis, you want to make sure that you have all of the relevant tests and you know how many replicates you're going to be using um, for both cyclic fatigue analysis and dynamic modulus analysis. So with that, I'm going to open up the FlexMAT cracking spreadsheet. And when I open it up, in this particular example, it defaults to the last page because um, 
when FlexMat cracking was saved, it was saved with some data inside. You'll notice that there are different tabs, one for instructions. This will walk you through what this video is going to talk about. Um, input data, where we decide and input the data. Dynamic modulus data, which shows the results of the analysis of dynamic modulus. Fatigue test, it says fatigue data validity. This is for you to look and observe um, the fatigue test results. Output fatigue, this is where you find your C versus S curve and your failure criteria. And then input to FlexPave, which is where all of the uh, relevant material factors needed to run FlexPave are presented and where we will ultimately export the data for use in FlexPave. One thing to note when you first access this spreadsheet, I'm going to go to the input data file, it doesn't matter where you go. Um, one of the first things that you're going to want to do is once you've downloaded this either through email or um, from a web-based uh, server, you're going to want to save the file in your local directory. The reason that we're going to do this is because um, this spreadsheet is a macro-enabled spreadsheet and saving it to your local directory is a way to make sure, is the way to make sure Microsoft Excel trusts the macro to be used on your computer. Um, if you have not or if your IT uh, group has disabled macros altogether on your um, Excel, then you want to make sure that you discuss with them how you can access or turn on uh, the macros for um, using FlexMat cracking. If you run into issues, errors are thrown, then the most likely ex the reason is because macros are not properly enabled or the file was not properly saved on your local directory. If you do an encounter this problem, then I suggest you reach out to us here at NC State. Uh, and when you do that, let us know what version of Excel you're running, not only the year version, but also whether it is a 64-bit or a 32-bit. And also let us know uh, if your window, what version of Windows you're running, and again, whether that is a 64-bit or a 32-bit. To run the analysis, um, again, in this case, uh, the FlexMat cracking has already gotten has already got some data inserted into it, and so we want to start out by clearing all those out, which we do by selecting Clear All Inputs on the Input Data tab. Now, what that's going to do, you'll notice that uh, at this point load fatigue data, load dynamic modulus data are blank, and if I click on these other cells, it throws an error because there's no data here to plot, and it resets all of your graphs for you. We're going to start out by inserting the number of replica tests that we have for both dynamic modulus and cyclic fatigue. We also need to input the VMA and VFA for our mixtures, so you want to make sure that you compile this information before you get started. One thing to note is that this is the VMA and VFA of the mixture as it was compacted. This does not mean the VMA and VFA of the mixed design samples. So you may have to do some additional calculations to find out what is the VMA and VFA of the mix at the air void content where you are testing it at. For, for this demo, I'm going to assume that, 50, that VMA is 15% and VFA is 75%. When you insert values into the spreadsheet, you'll notice these values. You'll notice that the load dynamic modulus data button activates. So we want to load dynamic modulus data by clicking on that button. In my example, because I've gone through this already, it defaults to the folder that I've um, put my example files. If it doesn't do that for you, it's OK. You just want to navigate to the folder where you have your dynamic modulus data. If I click into dynamic modulus data, I now have each of the three folders. Now, um, the way this software works is it wants you, as it says here at the top, to select a folder with the dynamic modulus data. You do not select the individual dynamic modulus data. So in order to select the folder, I click once and hit OK. Now, the software is going to prompt it's this prompt will disappear and then another one's going to appear for us to load the second replica so when I press OK it disappears and another one appears now I've already selected surface one so I want to select surface two 
and then a third time I want to select Surface 3. Now that will do the that uh, the software will pop up this window for as many replicates as you have entered into the dynamic modulus specimen dialog here or, or input parameter there. So this is the third one. I select and again all I'm doing is selecting the folder, press OK. Software does some calculations and it spits out the results in the dynamic modulus data tab. You'll notice that here you can observe the variation of your replicate data. This data looks pretty good. You can also observe the uh, standard error for your replicates. So here we're looking at specimen one, and this is simply giving us a warning that the load standard error is slightly outside the established standard. Now the standard itself is blind or is um, silent on what you should do uh, with respect to um, interpreting load standard error on one or two frequencies and temperatures. Here the values are pretty close, and so we would accept that. Um, for, for this example problem at least. But at any rate, you can look through and scroll and see how the data looks for each of the replicates that you see numbered here, specimen one, two, and three. Uh, you could decide to clear all inputs and start again. Um, I'm not gonna do that here, but again, you can explore what comes out of this uh, file. Now, once we've loaded the dynamic modulus data, the load fatigue data button initializes, and we can use this to load our fatigue data. It's going to follow the same pattern as our dynamic modulus. When I click on the button, it, it brings up a, a dialog window for me to select a folder with the fatigue test data. Now you'll notice that by default, it goes to the same folder, which is dynamic modulus. So I don't want to do that. I want to go back to example files, locate my cyclic fatigue data, and I'm going to do the same thing that I did for uh, dynamic modulus click one time on the folder containing the data for the first specimen. When the pop-up appears again, I click one time on the folder containing the data for the second. And then when it comes up the third time, I click the folder for the third test and hit OK. The program goes into a calculation and it spits out again C versus S curves, GR failure criteria, and the so-called DR, or cumulative 1 minus C versus NF failure criteria. You'll notice the, the, in this example, we've also found, have some yellow highlights on the DMR values. Um, the current standard does not require the DMR to be between 0 0.9 and 1.1, but we wanna, that's generally an indication that the data is in good quality. It's not uncommon for those who begin running the cyclic fatigue test to find values that are much, much different than 0 0.9 to 1.1 range. This example, the data is not that different. It's, it's okay. But we have seen some labs that will produce DMR values as low as 0 0.6. And usually this is an indication that the experiment is not being conducted correctly, specifically that the conditioning time that you're following for running the test is not long enough. And if you're seeing this in your data, then, then I suggest maybe reaching out to the NC State group to get more information on what might be able, what might be the cause of the experimental issue. Uh, the last thing that I want to show you on this spreadsheet is the input to FlexPave tab. This tab has all of the inputs that are needed to run FlexMat, including the damage criteria, the linear viscoelastic characterization properties here at the top and middle. In order to create the, the text files that FlexPave needs to read, we're going to click on two different buttons. First, we're going to export the dynamic modulus inputs. I click once. A dialog button comes up for us to save a comma delimited file. You can save the file as any name that you want. I tend to put them into the master folder. And I also tend to put a subtext on what mix I'm looking at. So this is the example mix. So I'll call it dynamic modulus underscore example. I then, that, that now has exported the dynamic modulus inputs. If I export FlexPay fatigue inputs, it takes me to the same folder. It's again a comma delimited file. And I will put it in as example here, which I save. 
Now, if I go to the folder where my data exists, you can find those two files are saved. They're very small files, and they contain the same information that you see on FlexMat Cracking Input to FlexPave tab. Okay, this video has summarized for you how to run FlexMat Cracking. Um, there will be a second video that runs through analyzing FlexMat rutting. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us and get clarification. Thank you.